of my Singer 66. So I've taken all the parts out of here and cleaned them all and reassembled the entire front of this machine. Okay, I made sure that screw was nice and tight. I've lubricated everything, readjusted, and polished everything. I've gotten the face plate fixed now. I got that all cleaned up. That came up pretty nice. I got some tarnishing that's going to be permanent in this. It's hard to see. I'll get some pictures at the end, of course. Um, you can see I have the thread guide fixed. Now, that was not an easy fix. As you can see, this is a rounded cover, and where that little rivet is is right there. So I had to sort of hold this in position while I used the punch to set down that rivet and fold that over. And in doing so, I end up splitting open the thread guide a little bit there. So I did get it punched on, but it was loose and I wasn't happy with it. So just to let you guys know, I did put a few drops of super glue to permanently bond that to the metal. So it is riveted there still, and the rivet is holding it, but it is bonded as well with super glue. Now, if it fails in the future um, and it doesn't hold, then maybe I'll source out a new plate. But for now, I don't have anything into this machine, guys. So that was a fix that I was very pleased to do. So now I got that thread guide fixed on that face plate. You can see how nice that looks. Everything is really nice and clean in there. I'll show some pictures uh, close up of and the end of, of this all nice and clean in there. Uh, I did not take out a few of the arms and I did not take out the needle bar so I didn't have to worry about resetting all of my timing and all of that. Um, all of that seems to be good so I didn't have any issues with that but I did take out my presser foot bar completely, the spring, all the assembly in here, all these screws. I also cleaned up all the um, mess on the screws there. I used a file and cleaned up what somebody had made a mess out of. Um, but anyways, all these parts are cleaned, lubed, and reassembled, and that's ready to go. It come up pretty nice. I'm actually quite impressed. There's that uh, front knob. It's got uh, it's got a dark um, chrome to it because it was it was black with rust. So uh, that turned out pretty nice actually. I like the patina on it. It looks pretty good. So every, all the parts turned out pretty good. Everything now I know I can move. I've gone over the machine completely to. Uh, Make sure that that screw that we found in the drawers in part two wasn't an important screw from any mechanisms. Now, as you can see, I have all the bobbin assembly out right now, and I still have this upper thread tensioner out right now. I am trying to see if I have a spring in my parts, because I do have a, a bunch of parts kicking around from machines I've salvaged. So I'm trying to find a spring, uh, but the spring on this is, re is wound in a different direction than most of my... Uh, parts the parts springs that I have are from 15 class and the spring is actually wound in the opposite direction So keep that in mind if you're trying to use parts from other machines um, They may not work. Okay, so what I do is I try to see if I got machine parts that are similar or the same and make them work Okay, for example, that's why we're here today. This is a uh, bobbin winder from a uh, model 128 that I had salvaged and taken all apart now, as you can see, the spring is still good on this bobbin winder. So what I'm going to do today, and take you guys along with me, and we'll find out. This could be a, a, a good video, or it could be a fail. Um, and I'm still going to post it, regardless of this working or not. I'm going to see if the spring from this arm is the same as the spring on this machine. Okay? So uh, give me a second, guys, here. I'm going to... Put this 128 bobbin winder down and I'm going to pull off my um, bobbin winder from my 66 here and uh, let's get this part apart and let's get this one apart and let's see if these two parts are uh, interchangeable. All right guys, so give me a second here and uh, let me get everything situated. Okay guys, so here you are. You can see I got both of the bobbin winders sat out here. I pulled the one off the 66 and I've pulled them apart off camera. And there wasn't too much to pull apart on the 128. You just undo that one screw right here and you can take the arm and the spring off. But on the 66, it's a lot more involved. You actually have to take that cam off and then take that arm off. And I want to show you guys something here. You see all that oil in there? See all that gook? Okay, when you find these machines and they're old and they haven't been ran in a while, or even if they're just old, period, 
don't think that just by dumping a bunch of oil in there that you can start using that machine again, okay? Because you got to think about what you're doing. All you're doing is look at this. Look inside it. Oh, there goes the screw. I'll pick that up in a sec. Look inside of here. Look how, look how much buildup and other crap. <laughs> That's so sticky. And it's got new oil on it. You can see that somebody has oiled it just recently. And it wasn't me. Um, but all you're doing is mixing up all that old dirt and grime with new oil. Yeah, sure, it feels like it's working fine. But really, you're damaging the machine by just lubricating the old gook. Because you're just mushing it in there. But anyways, let's move on to can we use the spring from a 128 in a 66? The answer is no, guys. The spring on a 66 is a lot smaller than on a 128. It's an internal spring. It goes inside the body of the bobbin winder. This one is uh, external. You can see it. Okay. So the answer is no. You cannot use a spring from a Model 28. Even though these bobbin winders look similar, they have that big gear and they have a little arm that goes back and forth, the spring is very different on a 128 than it is on a 66. So there you go guys, just thought I'd show you. Um, this spring is broken. It's got the tab broken off that locks into the body of the bobbin winder. So I'm gonna have to get a new spring for my bobbin winder, a new spring for my upper thread tension. And this machine should be up and going guys. So let me source some springs, see if I got anything I can use that's kicking around here. I do have a couple more bobbin winders, but uh, this spring is no good. So, anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Just wanted to show you guys the bobbin winders, the front of the machine all nice and clean. Everything's going good so far. Hope you enjoy these series. Stay tuned for part five. Hopefully by then, I'll have this machine up and going for you guys. I'm going to get underneath the machine, do a little bit of lubing and cleaning, and then uh, go from there. But I might even pull the whole underbody of this apart now that I see it's not that hard to do. Anyways, guys... Take care and stay safe.